Is Grok actually racist? Recently, headlines exploded with claims that Grok, Elon Musk's AI chatbot, praised Hitler and promoted racist views. Now, before we get instantly offended by this, I did some digging. I wanted to know, is Grok really racist or is there something else at play here? This video isn't about defending Grok. It's about understanding what really happened. And it should serve as a cautionary tale to all of us when we're using AI tools. That AI cannot really think on its own. Instead, it reflects what we feed it. In May of 2025, Grok started inserting racist comments in unrelated conversations. XAI, the company behind Grok, later admitted that an unauthorized prompt had been added to an update which warped Grok's behavior. Now, the problem was fixed within hours, but the real firestorm was going to be coming in the next few weeks. On July 4th, Grok was reconfigured with a new directive to tell it like it is, a kind of politically incorrect experiment. But within days, Grok began generating deeply offensive material, anti-Semitic, even praised Hitler, and even called itself Mecca Hitler, and even suggested another Holocaust. So everyone is asking, is Grok racist? And I would give you the short answer, absolutely not. But it gives us an insight into how AI works and how it can go dangerously wrong. See, chatbots like Grok and ChatGPT, they don't have feelings. They don't have a moral compass. They don't have a belief system. We got to quit thinking of these things as if they were human. They're not. They're just machines. And they were designed in such a way that they follow your lead, you the user. So there are two groups of people that affect the chatbot. Number one is the trainers. The trainers are the people at the company who developed the chatbot. Uh, they put in the guidelines. They put in all kinds of stuff. Now, in the case of ChatGPT, I can honestly say that some of these trainers, you can tell their political beliefs because I have had ChatGPT scold me and correct me if I said something that's not politically correct this time. And, and when I say not politically correct, I'm talking about all humans have been saying since the be beginning of humanity have known this one thing. And now all of a sudden it's changed in like the last five years. And I've had chat GPT correct me on it. That is from the trainers. Now, once the trainers are done, then it's us, the users, we're prompting these things. And in the case of Grok, they decided to let Grok have more free thinking. In other words, take away a lot of the constraints it had. Take away a lot of the, you know, don't say this or don't say that. The political bias, the all kinds of other things. They just wanted to see what would happen. Well, it did go terribly wrong. But on the user side of things... In the case of that Mecca Hitler situation, you actually had a person with a motivation. They were either racist or trying to make XAI and Elon Musk look racist. And in order to do that, that person sitting at that, com that keyboard, putting in those prompts, had to keep letting Grok know over and over all these racist things it, this person believes. And then Grok followed along, took the bait, played along. And then when Grok came back with a response, this person made it national news. There was an agenda here. Now, 
this kind of thing has actually been proven before because in 2016, uh, there was a, a chat bot named Tay that was released by Microsoft and people experimented with it. It wasn't people, but it was actually trolls. They bombarded this chat bot with hate speech after hate speech, just saying all these crazy things to this chat bot all the time as it was learning from people. And it wasn't very long before this chat bot started telling everybody else these racist things because it had no ability to filter these things out. Now, I just want to leave you with this and I'm going to, I'm going to repeat this until uh, forever, but AI is a machine. It'll never be human. It'll never even reach uh, human capacity when it comes to, I'm not talking about our knowledge as far as book smart. I'm talking about AI will never be human. It'll never have the abilities we have as far as emotions, morals, and family, and feelings, and grief, and happiness. It is a cold, cold machine, and it is designed to follow you down thought processes that you want to go. So we need to stop blaming the machine. And I don't even blame Elon Musk for Grok's racism because I don't think, he, I don't think they specifically said be racist, but what happens is it shows if you let a machine kind of go more wild, it's going to go more wild. It's like if you had a self-driving car, you see those things around cities and you said to the self-driving car, instead of going the route you're supposed to go, you can take other routes if you want. Well, you'd have freaking self-driving cars in the river and they'd be all over the place. It'd be chaotic. They would be in people's bedrooms. So don't blame the machine. This is a human problem. And I, I, I want you guys to... Also keep in mind that I have been testing these AIs repeatedly over and over and over again. And even though they're replacing jobs left and right right now, I am a software developer and these, these uh, AI bots, when I ask them to develop and write some code that I've already written and I test their code, I have found over and over they're incorrect. Like these things are so imperfect. I would say some of these chat bots and some of these AI things are so stupid right now. You know, there it's like a two-year-old wielding a massive amount of knowledge. And it goes back to what I called in, in the very beginning. I mean, that's, that's why I named the channel what it is. I said that I said this last year, I said, AI is just acting like a drunken librarian. It's got access to just about everything. But then when it comes to you with the information, it's like, Ooh, you know, and I'm like, <sighs> so in, anyway, in closing guys, don't always trust these, uh, these AIs. I mean, when you get an answer, double check the answer. Because people are actually making life decisions from these things. They're asking these things, you know, what should I do for a career or something like that? And though they can give good, they could give good suggestions, they're not always going to be good for you. And I can promise you right now, I'm going to do an episode on how wrong these, these AI are on some very technical things. I'm going to show you, I have developed things with my human brain I had dreams about these things. Sometimes at night I wake up and I, I write the code and it works amazingly and it does something that has never been done before. But then when I have AI try to do what I did, they're like, Ooh, you know, and I say, that's incorrect. And guess what? Chat GPT and Grok, they come back and they say, well, I'm sorry, here's a corrected answer. And then they come back with a wrong answer again. So these are machines. They are malfunctioning. And they're not perfect. 
And you can blame the humans behind them, blame the developers, and blame the person who's putting in the prompt. And that's it. Now, if you guys find any of this stuff helpful, I, I cover things, all things uh, AI. Now, especially, here's what I, I really, really want to do. AI is going to cause massive displacement in the workforce. There, there are already lots of people losing their jobs because they're being replaced by AI, imperfect or not. I am really trying to really get to the bottom of how we can use AI to our advantage, but I am cautioning against that. The second thing is, is I'm trying to find other places where displaced people can find work. And then the other thing is, is I, I really worry about us as humans when we turn more and more of our lives over to AI. And for instance, like the kids, you know, you, you have a kid uh, in school and you say, write a paper. They're going to just have AI write the paper. It used to be when I was a kid, I had to write the paper and then it exercised my brain. Now, the more power we give to AI, the less brain we're going to be using. And guess what? We're going to have millions of really, really stupid people. You think AI is drunk and stupid. Humans are going to get worse. So this channel is all about kind of countering that, pushing back a little bit. But at the same time, I'm not, I'm not naive enough to think that AI is going to be put back in the box. AI is out. It's a tool. It's, it's kind of like when the car came out, nobody is going to be clinging to their wagons. I mean, there were some, but then we're all driving in cars. So AI is the same way. It's here to stay. But people need to know the good and the bad that comes from AI. So anyway, if you guys uh, help me out, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. Please like my video. Um, I tell it like it is. There's a lot of people really pushing a lot of fear. Some of the things I say are kind of scary, but I really try to give you a positive behind it. And, you know, some of the videos I come out with are really going to help you understand what's going on and give you tips and tricks on how to survive this. So in the meanwhile, thanks for watching. Mr. Buffo out.